Today, learn about UPnP Universal Plug and Play, the cool features it has, and its dark side. <laughs> Welcome to TQA Weekly. I'm your host, Steve Smith, aka Zidaxis, and yes, you may call me that. And if you have any questions, comments, suggestions, and or stories, email me at ask at tqaweekly.com in the show notes for this episode here, tqaweekly.com slash se3ep08. We're going to talk about UPnP, a feature that has been on routers for about three years, also known as Universal Plug and Play, functions much like USB devices on your Windows, Linux, or Mac computer or any other gadget. And it actually is a set of networking protocols that allows any device being connected, including computers and or software, to automatically, automatically connect to your network, obtaining an IP, announcing its abilities, learning about other installed networked devices, enumerating existing ports, changing them or replacing them with basically what it is. This feature is added to all new routers for the past three years, and it makes it incredibly easy for anybody to connect any brand new device, including those that are less tech savvy, to make them all work. That's basically the cool thing. You don't need to be a genius. You don't need to be tech savvy. You just buy the product, connect it to the network, and that's it. And most of the time, it requires a manual of less than four pages with pictures, by the way, to explain to somebody how to connect their device to the network. Now, for all the cool stuff this does, it does have a fairly dark side. UPnP does not have an authentication protocol. Any piece of software, any device, is capable of changing the port mapping, which is a problem because we use routers and they use something called a NAT firewall, network address translation. For our computers within our network to be able to connect to the outside world and receive in the correct computer the information for any website, the router needs to know where the packet came from, where it's being sent, and has to know that, that from that server, that request was done for this computer or other device. So in other words, what happens is we need network address translation more than it needs us. Without the NAT firewall, we cannot protect ourselves. We cannot connect to the internet without connecting directly to the modem. We basically can't do anything. But network address translation has something that's really cool about it. It doesn't accept inbound traffic whatsoever unless you tell it to accept inbound traffic. And UPnP made this easier for people to do. It's an extremely passive technology that the user does not need to know of his existence. And that is a problem because it's normally those who don't know about these kinds of technologies that will accidentally infect themselves by going to places they shouldn't be messing around in in the first place. So what happens? Well, if you infect the computer, or any other device, corrupting it with spyware, viruses, or rootkits, what can happen is these malicious pieces of software can modify the port routing, completely open the firewall, allowing any type of inbound traffic to get in. This means that in cases like Windows, you can use an RDP exploit on an unpatched system. Remember, these are probably the same people that don't know better, that are not patching their windows. There are still people that believe that patching your, their operating system is dangerous and it's not, it's the reverse, you should be doing it. But just let's get to the point here. In Windows, various forms of Windows have an RDP exploit, remote desktop protocol, which allows rogue individuals or even just software to connect to your computer externally and gain control. They can use your computer to send out spam. They can use your computer to do DDoS attacks, which are distributed denial of service attacks. 
They can turn your computer against you by actually have it linked together as part of a botnet. Basically, they can do a bunch of junk to it. But with the whole firewall open, every device in your network now becomes basically a potential victim of being hacked, being affected, even being obsolete. Various gadgets don't accept kindly the modification of their firmware or operating system and can cease functioning correctly whatsoever. You may have to replace hardware. You may actually have to rebuild their operating systems, in some cases having to re-upload their firmware for them to function correctly. So what can you do? Well, until we have a viable form of authentication in UPnP, you can just turn it off. What you do is you log into your router and you go under what, where it normally is, the advanced settings, and you turn off UPnP. Now, before you start believing all these crazy end of world messages your router is going to tell you, please keep something in mind. This will only basically affect inbound traffic. Traffic within the network will flow freely. You can still talk to other computers even if UPnP is off because it has nothing to do with the fact that you of your communications with another computer. You're networked together. A whole different series of protocols allows you to see other computers and devices and you do not need UPnP to connect to your PS3, your iPhone, your Android or any other device that you have. So turn it off for a few days and if you see nothing happens, just leave it off because you don't actually need it. And here's the thing, if you're doing something cool like torrenting or something and you need inbound traffic, you can normally get the instructions on which ports you need to open and just do it manually. It's actually going to be safer since you won't risk the security of any of your other devices. Or at the very worst, if you really need a computer to be open to the world, just make sure you don't have anything sensitive on it. Get yourself a smaller machine that you don't really care about and DMZ the machine, basically leaving it outside the firewall. You can basically isolate it. If anything happens to that machine, it won't compromise the whole network. But basically, you do not need UPnP as much as you believe. And for the most part, you don't notice anything's wrong when it's turned off. In fact, it's only been around for three years and most consoles and hardware have been around for a lot longer. So if nothing happened before, it's not going to happen now. Next week, by the way, I'm going to show you it. How about this thing? It's a two bay network storage drive, a NAS drive. I bought a D-Link DNS 325, put in two hard drives, and here's the point. Windows and Mac users have it easy. You get a start disk that will help you connect to the network in your computer, the NAS drive. Linux users don't. So next week, I'll explain how to mount a NAS drive under Ubuntu 12.10 so that everybody in the network, whether you use Mac, Windows, or Linux, will be able to communicate with the NAS drive without any issue. Remember to like this episode if you're interested in today's topic. Share if you think somebody else can possibly learn from this episode. And subscribe if you wish to learn more for more show notes on this episode and others. How to subscribe to my show by other means. How to subscribe to the newsletter. And basically for all the other information as well as sending me your questions, comments, suggestions, and or stories, head over to tqaweekly.com. Stay safe and online and have a great day.